All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first page is just errors that I noticed from your activity one. Uh, I haven't graded them all yet, but uh, don't worry. Uh, this weekend was like the perfect storm, but I will be caught up with everything and we won't be far behind in any in much classes. Uh, but here's the number one thing that I that I saw from you guys, the number one errors that I saw. So you guys have a tendency to write x plus h squared as x squared plus h squared. And I think we covered this like several times already. That is not that. Remember that x plus h squared is x plus h times x plus h. So whenever you see that, x times x is x squared. x times h is xh. And then again, h times x is another xh. And then h times h is h squared. So that's why when I tell you guys, when you see x plus h that's being squared, you can just go x squared plus x times h is xh. You're going to have two of them. And then h squared. Cool? Okay. Yes, ma'am. okay all right uh, the common denominator notation so some of you guys are doing this which I, I understand what you're doing but I have to take away a point you go times and you went x plus h plus 4 and then you went times and then you went x plus 4 I get it that you're multiplying x plus h plus 4 both the numerator and denominator but that's not the correct notation guys you gotta go x plus h plus 4 like so and then x plus 4 like so you got to show that you're multiplying by 1. If you don't show that you're multiplying by 1, then you're not doing quote-unquote common denominator. Unless you put in words common denominator and then you show that. And I know maybe you're like, man, you're being real picky. What if this were multiple choice? I would have gotten it right. Well, if it's free response, like in Cal, when you take your free response exam, the free response portion, if it's not correct algebra, they're going to count it wrong. And I think when you hit the university, you're not going to have any multiple choice exams. Unless it's a standardized exam. But uh, it's very rare that you have a math course at the university that's actually going to be multiple choice. I don't know. Prove me wrong. When you get to the university, swing by and like, look at my exams. They're all multiple choice. But I doubt it. But... Cool or not cool? Okay. So, and then the use of parentheses. Oh, MG, this one. Okay. When you have something like, uh, let me see. So some of you are writing something like uh, 2 x plus h okay that's correct but then some of you write something like two times x plus h can you tell me what's the difference between the top one and the bottom one yeah i mean I, yeah this is two times x plus h and this one is, i know what you're trying to tell me two times whatever i have on the right but notice this looks like 2x plus h which is not the same as 2x plus 2h do you guys see the difference so make sure you don't do that. And then the equal signs. OMG, guys, with the equal signs. Uh, so you guys have f of x plus f of 2. Uh, this was like on the activity letter A, letter B. And then you wrote what f of 2 was. You just went uh, 3 times uh, 2 squared. I'm looking at an activity right now. Plus 5 times 2 plus 10. Guys, that is not. Let me go ahead and write what f of x is. f of x is 3x squared plus 5x plus 10 from the activity, from activity 1. So notice the mistake you did. You put an equal sign, and this right here that I'm circling in blue, all that is just f of 2. That is not f of x plus f of 2. Do you guys see that? So this one is an error sign with an equal sign. So what you should do is you should go on the side, and you should write f of 2 equals 3, 2 squared plus 5 times 2 plus 10, which I believe was, I have it right here, 32. And then from there go, uh, I'm going to do it in green now, f of x plus f of 2, that is 3x squared plus 5x plus 10 plus 32, and then combine like terms. Some of you left it like that. I just put the, you know, an awkward emoji with, I gave you full credit, I didn't take points off. But, you know, try to combine like terms when you can, guys. Okay. Okay. So those were the errors that I found on activity one, and you'll get yours back hopefully the next time we see each other again. Does someone have a question? I thought I saw. Okay. All right. 
let's go to the second page. And I know all this stuff right here is pretty, it's not, it's the reason why it's so boring, guys, is because you guys already know this. You've seen it. You've seen it since you were in eighth grade. And by now, a lot of you have seen it for three or four times. And you're like, man, OMG, stop with this. So sorry, guys. We just have to review it real quick. Okay. So all these are just notes. This is a general form, point slope form, uh, where x1, comma y1 is a point, vertical line, slope intercept form, and a horizontal line. So example one says write an equation in slope intercept form uh, for the linear function f such that f of negative 2 equals 10. So this is a court, an ordered pair, negative 2, 10, and 0, 4. See? So the first thing you do, guys, is just find your slope. Your slope is change in y over change in x, which is nothing more than y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then you just label. Here's me labeling x1, y1, x2, y2. And here we go. My slope is 10 minus 4 over negative 2 minus 0. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. So let's see, 6 over negative 2, so negative 3. Cool or not cool? Okay, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. I don't see any. Okay, so then from there, I'm going to write my slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. I already know that m is 3. Here it is. So y equals negative 3x. And what's my y intercept? Well, luckily they gave it to me, plus 4. You did not have to go that route. Um, here's a very popular route that you guys like. I don't necessarily like it, but you guys tend to love it. That's fine. Uh, correct math is correct math. You guys tend to do this a lot. You go y equals mx plus b. You solve for your m, which is correct, negative 3. And you go y equals negative 3x plus b. And then you can use any point to figure out your b. So I'm going to use a 0, 4 because it's the easier one. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer with the negative 2, 10. And you go 4 equals negative 3 times 0 plus b. 4 equals b. OMG, there's my b. I'm going to plug it in right there. y equals negative 3x plus 4. I'm not a big fan, but I guess. Maybe that's, what, that, how, that's how they taught you in the junior high and it just stuck with you. Um, that's fine. I'm not a big fan, but that's fine. Correct math is correct math. I'll show you in a little bit what I prefer. How are we feeling, guys? Are you guys feeling happy? Do you like the rhythm app where you get to pick a... Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> All right, it says, given f of negative 2 equals 3 and f of 4 equals negative 5, write the equation in point-slope form. That's actually the preferred method. Point-slope form. So here we go. I have a point, negative 2, comma, 3, and I have another point, 4, comma, negative 5. I still have to find my slope the same way. So I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. If, you're, if you feel that you're a pro, if you feel that you're pretty beast, you do not have to label. You can just go right into it. If you feel that these, these little steps help you, go ahead. Your slope is a change in y over the change in x. You're going to see that in physics, a triangle, since we're changing. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I use my little my little green things here that help me out. So y2 is negative 5, so negative 5 minus 3 over 4 minus a negative 2. Negative 5 minus 3, I can just add them, keep the sign, 5, 6, 7, 8, so negative 8. 4 minus a negative 2, that turns to plus. So 4 plus 2 is 6. So that fraction reduces to a negative 4 thirds. Is everyone okay? Okay, here we go. Point slope form. Here's my point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals slope X minus X1, where X1 and Y1 is a point. Since I already labeled X1, Y1 to be this one, that's what I'm going to use. Am I going too fast, guys? I'll slow down. So I'm going to go Y minus 3 equals, my slope is negative 4 thirds, x minus a negative 2, so plus 2. And there it is. How do we feel? Perfect. Has everything been clear so far? 
Right. So this one next, it says simplify the slope intercept form. This is why I like this better, guys, because you don't have to solve for B. You can just solve for Y right off the bat. So check it out. And I'll go slow. I'm just going to rewrite it. What we're trying to do is to get Y equals MX plus B. So you want Y by itself. So I'm going to distribute the negative 4 thirds. Y minus 3 equals negative 4 thirds X minus 4 times 2 is 8. So 8 thirds. And I'm going to add 3. So let me go plus 3 here so you can see what I'm doing. Plus 3. Now remember, and I guess I'll change the color again. Travis, there's a fraction. Well, if you have a calculator, that's not, that's not a problem. But if you do not have a calculator, take that 3 and then just multiply it. I'm looking for black. There it is. Just multiply it by that denominator there. 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 is equivalent to 9 over 3. And it, it, it's true. 9 divided by 3 is 3, right? Negative 8 plus 9. Uh-oh. Negative 8 plus 9, guys? Yeah, 1. So uh, positive or negative? Negative 8 plus 9 plus. Plus a 1 and keep the 3. Plus 1 third. Hey, Chav, would it have worked if I used the other point? Heck yeah, it would have. It would have worked. I'm going to do it in blue. But not right. Just observe. That way you can really take this in. So if I would have used the other color, if you're still catching up, that's fine. If I would have used, and look, I'm just, I'm doing this in blue. I will give you a chance to write it down if you want, but if you feel that you're really strong, you don't need to write it down. So here we go. I'm going to go y minus a negative 5, so plus 5, equals, i got to keep the slope. The slope is the same. 4 thirds x minus 4. Is everyone okay with why I wrote what I wrote? Yeah, don't write anything down. I'll give you time to write down if you want. Go check it out. I'm going to solve for y, and I bet you I'm going to get the same equation. If not, I'm fake. I don't want to be fake, guys. So here we go. y plus 5 equals negative 4 thirds x. Negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to turn to 16 over 3. And now I'm going to move the 5, so I'm going to go minus 5, minus 5. Again, my little hack, just multiply that 5 by that 3, so that negative 5 is equivalent to... Let's say 15 over, and then keep the denominator 3. Negative, of course. And I'll check it out. Just like we did a little while ago, 16 minus 15, that's 1. Keep the 3 in the bottom. OMG, y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 1 third. Is that not the equation that we got in red? Yeah, it is. Look, same. It does not matter what point you use. You will always get the same equation. You guys see that? Isn't that cool? All right, now if you want to write, you can. Here we go. General form. Relax, guys. The Okay, I've seen te textbooks that have been hypocrites. Uh, te most textbooks say that in general form, your A has to be positive and no fractions. But I've seen textbooks that have written A as a fraction. Uh, in general, you want a to be a you want a and b to be integers in general, but every now and then someone will just throw a fraction in there. So here we go. My equation was y equals negative four thirds x plus one third. I want it to look like this: ax plus by equals c. So I'm going to move that negative four thirds x to the left. So I'm going to write four thirds x plus y equals one third. I see that I have the denominator 3 twice. I have the 4 thirds there and the 1 thirds there. So I know that I can get rid of all the fractions if I just simply multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply this whole dude by 3. And I'm going to get, let's see, 3 times 4 thirds. That's just going to, the 3's cancel out. I'm going to get 4x plus 3 times y. That's going to be 3y equals 3 times 1 third, 1. There it is. I have nothing but integers, pretty numbers. The a is positive. We're good. Cool. The ACT likes the SAT and ACT both like that uh, general form, and then from there they'll ask you like, what's the slope? Give me the y-intercept. Give me the x-intercept. Stuff like that. If you need help with SAT, ACT, you're always welcome to swing by. We can work on a whole bunch of problems until you are satisfied. Let's go to the next page. Hopefully, all this is review. 
It says, find the linear function f that satisfies the following conditions. I pass through the point for 3 and parallel to the line y equals 5. So I think the best way to do this one, guys, I think you guys are visual learners. So this is the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. And I'm going to put a point for 3. So I'm going to say 4, 3 is like right here. 4, 3. And I'm going to say the line y equals 5 is like up here. So here's 5. And here I, I am. I'll zoom in. The only way that I can go through that point and be parallel to the line y equals 5 is if I have the line y equals 3. And there it is. Are you feeling okay? Perfect. Yeah, that one's pretty straightforward. All right. We got another one. Another one. Who is this? Like DJ Khaled? DJ Khaled. I think it was him that would say another one, right? Okay. Sorry, I'm showing my age. That guy's like a, from who knows how old. All right. Find the linear function f of x that satisfies f of negative 5 equals 7. And has a graph that is parallel to the line 3x plus y equals 9. So there it is in general form. I'm going to move that 3x to the right. So 3x plus y equals 9. Move the 3x to the other side. y equals negative 3x plus 9. I don't really care about the y-intercept. If I want my next line to be parallel, I know that I need to have what slope? Negative 3. I need to have the same slope for me to, for the next for the other line to be parallel, right? So I find here's my point. I'm gonna use point slope. Y minus seven equals my slope, negative three, parenthesis, x minus a negative five, so it turns into a plus. Guess what, guys? You can actually leave it right here, and that's correct. If it's free response, I'm kind of right. You don't have to solve. We're going to solve for y just for practice, but you don't have to. That's why I like this, be this the best. All right, let's solve for y. Move that negative 3 like so. y minus 7 equals negative 3x minus 15. I'm going to add 7 plus 7 plus 7. y equals negative 3x. Let's see, the difference between 15 and 7. 5, 6, 7, 8. So minus 8. And there it is. The line negative 3x minus 8 is parallel to negative 3x plus 9. How do we feel, guys? Nothing crazy. Have we done anything crazy? Yeah. I feel like there's a song that says, do something crazy. It might not be PG-13, so I don't know. It's probably like a DJ Khaled song or something. Okay, find the linear function f of x that satisfies f of negative 7 equals negative 10 and has a graph that is perpendicular to the line 24x minus 6y equals negative 10. All right, tell me something about perpendicular. I know perpendicular means that they intersect to form a 90 degree angle, but tell me something about the slopes. Uh, okay, that's part of it. They have to be opposite and what else? Such as letter R. Opposite reciprocal. Good job, guys. So let's find out this slope and then just do opposite reciprocal. And we'll do the same shenanigans with, that we did with the other one. So here we go. I'm going to move the 24x to the other side of the equal sign. So negative 6y equals negative 24x minus 10. Anytime you move it to the other side, it changes polarities. And I'm going to divide by negative 6. And I don't really care about the y-intercept as much. I mean, if I want to be correct here, I'll go ahead and show it. But 6 goes into 24, I believe, four times. And then negative divided by negative is a positive. So plus looks like it's 5 thirds. But I don't really care too much about that y-intercept. Does everyone know why I needed to do this? Because I needed to find this slope. What is my new slope? When you see a little n there, that stands for new. Perfect. One fourth, positive or negative? A negative one-fourth, because it needs to be opposite reciprocal for it to be perpendicular. Does that make sense? Put that for good notes. 
or perpendicular, comma, opposite, reciprocal. All right, here we go, guys. I got my point. I don't know if it helps. If it helps, put it in an ordered pair, negative 7, comma, negative 10. And I'm using my point slope form. Y minus a negative 10 turns into a positive equals negative 1 fourth. X minus a negative 7 turns into a. If it's free response, you can leave it like that. That is the correct answer. If they want it in terms of Y, we just solve for Y. Distribute. Y plus 10 equals a negative 1 fourth X minus a 7 fourth. And I'm going to subtract 10. So I'm going to go minus 10, minus 10. We do that little hack. 10 times 4 is 40. Keep the denominator. So negative 40 over 4. That's the same thing as negative 10. Yeah, it is. And then I just add them because they're both negative. Negative 7 plus a negative 40. That's a negative 47. Keep the denominator. Keep the sign. So my equation is y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 47 over 4. How do we feel, guys? All right, example 6. It says find the x and, y, and, x and y intercepts for the following function. f of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 21. It's very basic, guys. Anytime you cross, so look, here's the visual because you guys are visual learners. This is y-axis, this is x-axis. And this is not that line, because this is a quadratic. I just drew some random line. Anytime you cross the y-axis, notice that the x value is 0. Anytime you cross the x-axis, notice that the y value is 0. You guys notice that? Yeah, so if I want to know what's my y-intercept, just plug in a 0 into x. So I'm going to write y-intercept. Insert x equals 0. So f of 0 equals 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 21. So I get f of 0 equals 21, negative 21. So my y-intercept, y-i-n-t, is 0 comma negative 21. It's all okay, guys? I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to find my x-intercept. To find my x-intercept, I know that the output better be 0. So I'm going to go 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 21. And I got lucky. There's a song called, he's so lucky, he's the star. It's Britney Spears, but you guys probably never heard of her. Um, OK, sorry, I'll stop. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got lucky here. Lucky. I, I'm a big fan of music, so any word will trigger me. I don't know if you guys are like that or not, but any word that starts with a song that I know is like, oh, I know that song, and immediately I go, into, go off on a tangent. All right. So 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 21. We got lucky that this factors. It does, they don't always factor, but this one does. What two numbers, when I multiply, will give me negative 21, but add up to a negative 4. Yeah, so we're going to go 0 equals, parenthesis, x minus 7, close, open, x plus 3. And now i got to find what makes that statement true, because I want it to equal 0. So what makes that statement true? Well, if x equals 7, 7 minus 7 is 0, 0 times anything is 0. What else makes that statement true? If x equals negative 3. Don't leave it like that, though. So here it is. I'm going to write x-intercepts x i n t's and then i'm going to put an ordered pair seven comma zero and negative three comma zero and there it is is there other ways to get these answers yes you could always graph them on the calculator and see where it touches the x-axis and the y-axis cool okay we are all so i have it says given f of x equals 4x squared plus 6x plus 2 Find the y-intercept for f of x minus 2. Okay, as soon as I see this, f of x minus 2 is a transformation 
of two units of f of x moving two units to the right. Of, of oh, that's fine. I'll draw of two units to the right. And then in parentheses, I'll write f of x. f of x, two units to the right. Two units right. Okay. Sorry, I know that's not like super awesome English. Ms. Grado will probably be like, what? what is he trying to say? I don't know. So she probably like rewrites the statement way better. What I'm trying to say, guys, is f of x minus 2 is a transformation of f of x, two units to the right. So I, all I got to do is think a little bit and be like, if I move f of x two units to the right, and I want to know about what my y-intercept is for f of x minus 2, that means I need to know the point when x is negative 2 on the original, because that point, if I move it 2 to the right, will be on the y-axis. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Previous classes have said, child, you're making me think too much. I think that's easier, because all I got to do now is just go f of negative 2, see, because that point, and I go 4 times negative 2 squared plus 6 times negative 2 plus 2. So let's see, 4, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 12 plus 2. So 16 minus 12 plus 2. 16 minus 12 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. So what is my y-intercept? My y-intercept is... 0, 6. I think that is easier. This is my y-intercept. I'll show you the other way. Don't worry. I see some of you looking at like, I have no idea what you did. Okay. This is what previous groups think is easier. They go, they look at me and go, child, that's way too hard. You just taught us a little while ago how to expand f of x plus h or f of x minus whatever. I'm just going to find what f of x minus 2 is. And then I'm just going to plug in a 0 in for x, because I know that I cross the y-axis when x is 0. So they go, and I'm writing it different, so here it is. f of x minus 2 is equal to 4 parentheses x minus 2, close it, squared, plus 6 parentheses x minus 2, close it, plus 2. So they expand this. Let's see. 4 parentheses x times x, x squared. x times negative 2, negative 2x. Two but you're going to have how many of those? You're going to have two of those, so they're going to be minus what? 4x, negative 2 times negative 2, plus 4, distribute, plus 6x minus 12 plus 2, that's a 2. So I'm going to distribute this 4, guys. See, I think this is way too much work, but previous groups thought this was easier. 4x squared minus 16x plus 16 minus 6x minus 10, from combining those two. 4x squared, oh, did I mess up? Oh, yeah, yeah, plus. That plus is that plus. Sorry about that, guys. I would have gotten a wrong answer. Thank you. Negative uh, 16x plus 6x, that's minus 10x. And then 16 minus 10, that is 6. So they get to here. So I'll wait for you guys to catch up. And then they say, I know that I crossed the y-axis when the x value is 0. So they plug in a 0, and if they plug in a 0, you get this to be 0, and you get your 6, and then they go from there. Oh, the y-intercept job is 0, 6. I think that's way too much work, but previous groups have thought that was easier, and I'm like, I can't deal with you guys, but whatever. Which one do you like? I like the first one, but... Because in my head, I thought the same thing, and before you explained it, since when you find the y-intercept, x is 0, I just thought in my head, at 0 minus 2. Negative 2? Perfect. Yeah. Maybe maybe I should just say, remember that the only time that you cross the x-axis, the y-axis, the y when the x-value is 0, maybe plug in a 0 directly in there, and you get your negative 2 immediately, and then just do that. So whatever works for you guys, let me know and keep me in the loop. Okay, last one. You guys ready? Oh, well, before I continue, are you guys happy with that last one? Okay. You know what, Miss Strait? I think I'm just going to just, for future classes, I think I'm just going to say just plug in a zero. Okay, I'll do that. None, so that way we don't have to talk about all the different methods. I'm just saying, when do you cross the y-axis? And they're going to tell me, at x equals zero. Okay, just plug it in. 
Just plug it in, and you get f of negative 2. Find out that value. Okay. Okay. Sorry, that was me projecting myself. I'm going to say it next year. <laughs> All right. Suppose the point 2, 3 lies in the graph of the function f of x. If the function is transformed, okay, so let's draw that transformation. 4f, parentheses, x minus 3, plus 6. What will be the coordinates of 2, 3 under this transformation? Okay. So I'm going to go slow. I want to know where 2, 3 is going to now be, like where that point is going to be on this transformation. I know this much. Here's, here's the steps you're going to do. Step number one, that f of x minus 3, transform your f of x, 3 units to the right. So uh, horizontal shift, 3 units right. So if you move three units right, what does that affect? Your x or your y coordinate? Your x. So here we go. I'm going to do the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go from 2, 3 to, and I just move, I just, I'm going to add 3 to the x. 3 plus 2, what's that? 5? I'm now at 5, 3. 3 units right. Are we okay? The second thing you do, you see that 4 there? That's a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch by a factor of 4. So when you stretch a function, does that mess with the x or the y axis? Or the x or the y coordinate, sorry. Which one? Think about it. If you, if you were to stretch a rubber band, if I were to stretch this, the x or the y? The Y. I, I, uh, did I, okay, it's okay. It's a safe space, guys. It's a safe space. So move, multiply the Y. So here we go. My point, 5, 3. Uh, vertical stretch by a factor of 4. Multiply the Y by 4. So 5, comma, what's 3 times 4? 12. And I'll show you where I got that 12. That 12 is 3 times 4. That value is 3, and this value here was 4. Sorry that my notes are not super awesome. Are we okay? Last step, that plus 6, that is a vertical shift up 6. When I do a vertical shift, does that move the x or the y? The y. So you take your 5, 12. And you do vertical shift up 6. That's a V and that's an S, but it just, yeah. 5 comma, if I move 6 up, 12 plus 6, 18. And I'll put, that came from 12 plus 6. How do we feel? Okay. I'm going to stop the recording.